I went to the club last week to hear the DJ play the latest jams and dance all of my worries away. In the midst of my routine, I was challenged to a dance battle. Wasn't the first time I had to embarrass a blonde haired kid on the dance floor, but to my utter shock and surprise, them white boys were dope and I got served. Whilst defeated and hanging my head in shame, I thought, wait, when did white people learn how to dance? The answer might shock you on this episode of Fugeology. When did white people learn how to dance? This generation probably doesn't remember a time when they couldn't, but I grew up in an era where the running stereotype was, y'all might have privilege and run the world economy, but you can't jump and you can't dance. Sure, you excelled at bougie ballroom dances like the waltz and the foxtrot, but historically, African-American dance has always been a display of swag, agility, and a form of cultural identity and pride. Now let's be real, there have always been white people that excelled above the stereotypes of their blue-eyed counterparts with more sauce than a little bit. But then came a cultural shift in 2001 with the release of the movie Save the Last Dance, starring Julia Stiles. In the movie, a white girl moves to Chicago and falls in love with a black guy from Barbershop, and he teaches her hip hop dance. This was monumental, but it was just a precursor to what most historians agree is the start of the white dance revolution. In 2006, a movie called Step Up, starring a virtually unknown young actor by the name of Channing Tatum, who we now formally know as the father of the white dance revolution. It spawned a movement with little white kids all around the world glued to their TVs with a glimpse of what they could become. The next milestone came with the launch of YouTube. Rapper Soulja Boy single-handedly brought hood dance tutorials to every home from the inner city to suburbia. The ability to play, pause, and replay all the latest dance moves had white kids rushing to school to show off their newfound skills. Apps like Vine continued the trend going into the 2010s, and now Instagram carries the torch. And that's how white people learned how to dance. Now for the big question. Is this the beginning of another cultural appropriation? White people taking something that is historically black and claiming it as their own? <sighs> sure, we've had some scares like the white twerk movement in which soccer moms and valley girls discovered twerking hundreds of years after it was created and began branding it as their own, teaching twerk out classes like it was brand new. Then of course there was the Harlem Shake fiasco in which EDM artist Bauer completely ripped off the name of the 2000s dance movement. And it was completely rebranded as this weird freeze frame viral challenge, which gave no credit to the original Harlem Shake. Despite these horrific offenses, I see this period in the white dance revolution as a bridging of a cultural gap, breaking down barriers. Watching white elementary kids whip and nay nay and shiggy with the rest of them brings a tear to my eyes and a smile to my face. I think it's time that we lay this stereotype to rest. You're welcome, white people. Congratulations. Well, that's all the time that we have for today. Do you have a cultural question that you'd like me to answer in one of my upcoming videos? Like, can brown people say the N-word? And can white people be woke? Well, comment your question below and I'll try to take a stab at it. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more content. And thank you for helping me meet 2,000 subscribers. Woohoo! Thank you for watching this episode of Futology. Until next time, peace, love, and show. Peace.